So what's up guys, it's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now in today's video guys, I have some tactics for the 4 triple two formation and if you want my honest opinions about it, it's not my personal favourite in terms of it being the most enjoyable but when it comes to getting results, there is no denying that it is one of the best formations in the game. So uh, yeah guys, here are my top 1% 4 triple two custom tactics for you. I hope you enjoy. If you guys want coins for FC24, make sure you check out MMO EXP com their link is down in the description they're very fast they're very cheap they're very reliable and if you use my code Rima you can get yourself a lovely five percent discount all right then guys so when it comes to the four triple two for the defensive style as I so often use with many formations I have the defensive style on balance now the reason we have this on balance is because I feel like it gives you the best control over your defense so when you want to press your opponent and be aggressive you can obviously do that and then when you want to be a little bit more passive and drop off you can also do that when it comes to applying pressure in this game as well you don't actually have to use any pressure tactics because of something that we'll get onto in a moment so balanced is definitely the way to go here now moving on to the defensive width guys something that i've preached about recently is having a lower defensive width now the reason i prefer to have a lower width is because if somebody's going to go down the wing and try and do one of those cutbacks they're going to do it regardless of what your width is so i think it's important to at least have a nice Nice compact defense so you can at least block all of those attacks through the middle and defend nice and compactly uh, as opposed to just getting passed through you know just at the hope you can stop a cutback you can also get out and block those cutbacks even with a lower width uh, so I prefer a lower width but it's completely up to you really uh, for the depth guys this is what I was on about when it came to the pressure in this game so if you're on the new gen version of EAFC 24 if you have your depth on 71 or higher, you'll get this automatic press from the AI. It's very strong and very overpowered. Um, you also get an automatic overload of the ball side, which makes it very difficult for your opponent to play through. Completely breaks their attacking AI and makes it very difficult for them to actually attack. Um, and the thing about this 71 depth, as opposed to these pressure tactics you'll see up here, is that when you use 71 depth, you'll actually get a minimal stamina drain. So you can basically press like a madman all game and not get punished for it in terms of stamina so this is something that's broken and i have said many times needs to be fixed but right now it is very very overpowered guys now moving on to the build up play guys i like to have this on balance this is because i find it to be the most controlled varied form of build up so when you want to play slowly you can do that and then if you want to speed up and play a little bit faster you can also do that so balance allows you to pick and choose when and where you use each style of build up de uh, depending on what is necessary at the time basically now moving on to chance creation guys, very important one here, I have this on direct passing. Now the reason direct passing is so important in this game is because it's the only tactic which will actually allow you to break through that park the bus defence. Now when your opponent is camping with everybody behind the ball, everyone in the box, the thing which like makes direct passing better than the other tactics is your players will push very far into your opponent's box and make those runs even if they're offside uh, and then those defenders will follow them on the opposition team and then what your attackers will do is they'll then track back after the defenders followed them to give you that passing option which is why the cutback meta is so strong in this game so direct passing very important yet again unfortunately even though it is a little bit boring very very necessary uh, for the width guys in the attack I like to have this on 37 there's not really a specific number you need to use if you want your attack to be crazy wide you can do that if you like wouldn't suggest it uh, and if you want to make it even more narrow you can also do that but again wouldn't really suggest it so just use Use whatever width you are comfortable with essentially uh, for players in box i just have this on six this is so we can get a few players into the box to help us finish off those chances and um, again that's a preference thing and for corners and free kicks another preference thing i just have them both on two so if i want to cross the ball i can and if i want to play it short i can also do that so just pick whatever you're comfortable with here Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but I have noticed around 90% of you that watch the content are not subscribed. So if you are finding any of these videos helpful, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as it does help me out massively. Also, don't forget to drop the video a like as well. And with all that aside, guys, let's get back to the video. Now, moving on to the player instructions, guys. On my more technical striker, in my case, this being the left striker, I have him on the stay central and mixed attack instruction. Now, the reason I have these instructions is because this player is a little bit 
bit more technical. He can do a bit more on the ball, which means you don't always want to limit him to just running in behind all the time. Sometimes you want him to come short and like retrieve possession there. Other times you will want him to get in behind. So stay central and mixed attack on your more technical minded striker. On the other striker, somebody that is just more of a finisher, uh, you know, somebody like Haaland, somebody that might not be as technical. I like to have him on stay central, get him behind and stay forward. Now we have him on stay forward, um, sorry, stay central because we don't want him drifting out into those wider areas as such in this formation. We want him to be like the main focal point up top, which is why it's important to keep him in those central areas. We also have him on getting behind, so he is always looking to utilize his pace to get in behind that defensive line. Again, very, very useful to have on this play. You know, we're not always going to want him to come short because if he's lacking that technical ability, he's not going to be much use retrieving the ball in those areas, to be honest. Uh, we also have this player on stay for wood, especially useful if this player is a taller player. Uh, the reason I like this is because, you know, if you win the ball back and your opponent is pressing you in your own half a lot of the time you can just launch the ball up to this player and beat the press and keep possession so that is why I like this instruction personally now for the right cam and the left cam guys a couple of very important instructions I'd say uh, come back on defense being the most important because if you look at this formation the way it is you'll see there are a couple of gaps next next to the two CDMs which is not good we don't want that because your opponent will be able to exploit that space if he's good at the game so what we need to do is come back on defense so these this left uh, cam and right cam will come back to defend as a left mid and right mid filling in those spaces that are left uh, because we don't want that so left mid right mid come back on defense makes you nice and narrow and compact but your players can also cover those wider areas as well so come back on defense very very important guys uh, get into the box across is also useful because it allows these players to get into the penalty area without hesitation because a lot of the time if you have them on balance crossing runs these players will hesitate uh, and not really help you out so I think get into the box across very important instruction on these players now for the left center defensive mid guys my more defensive minded player of the two i have him on cut passing lanes stay back while attacking and cover center pretty self-explanatory instructions but obviously stay back means he's not going to go flying forward we don't really want him to do that if he's more defensive minded cut passing lanes means he's always looking to break up the play uh, intercept those passes and regain possession for us another very important instruction on this player and then we also have him on cover center so he'll primarily defend those central areas to block those attacks through the middle now for the right CDM guys, I actually like to use a more box to box style player in this position. Uh, so on this player, I leave him on balanced attack and then we have cut passing lanes and cover center for the same reasons as the other player. We prefer to have this player on balanced attack because like I said, he's more box to box. So we don't just want to limit him to defending all the time. We kind of want him to attack and defend. So we just let him do that essentially. Uh, cut passing lanes again, intercept all those passes and then cover center to cover those central areas. Very, very useful. Now when you're more attacking minded fullback I would suggest balance attack and overlap now the reason I suggest this is because if you looked at my tactics you'll see I have quite a narrow attacking width which means a lot of our players will be in the more central position so it's very useful to have this player on balanced overlap as it always gives you that wider uh, option and another angle to pass from which is very underrated because a lot of the time you can struggle against a good player if your attack's too narrow. So just having this player overlapping to give you that wider option actually stretches your opponent's defense quite a lot and allows your other players to make more runs. So I think this is very important. On your more defensive mind of fullback, stay back and overlap. This is so you have at least three defenders back at a time so you can be nice and defensively sound. But if you have him on the overlap run type, if you do send him on a run forward, he'll make the overlapping runs and do the same as the other fullback. As for the two centre-backs, guys, I leave them alone. And the goalkeeper, I also leave them alone. But you can just put them on comes crosses and sweeper keeper if you would like. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is basically it for the video. If you have enjoyed or found it useful, please be sure to drop it a like. It does really help me out. Sub to the channel if you are new. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you do get notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out, guys.